Okay, and welcome, welcome, welcome. Let me get the camera angle a little better uh, as best I can. Let's see. Uh, this is the best angle I can do. There's a reason for that. And as you know, I'm going to play actually one of my songs later. I have it set up to play the guitar for one of my favorite song of the month songs. So this is the best angle can I do. So I might have to lean down for you Zoomers out there. You guys can see me no matter what. So if you see me doing this, you'll know why. Oh, I know. I got, I'm got. i all about chords here. I'm all about that. Catch me if I fall. But I think what I'll do is I'll open up with the song first, practice it through because I didn't rehearse it. I did rehearse it on Saturday. And uh, we'll see how this goes here. All right. Da, 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 da. Three, two, one, action. I know you won't be able to see it too well there, but... Fade out. You don't know when the fade out is done. <clears throat> okay, that was my rehearsal, so I'll play it again <laughs> at the end of the class <clears throat> now that I got it warmed up. Okay, so <clears throat> I'm still standing. Believe it or not, um, the song actually has nothing about being, you know, resilient and all that stuff. It was actually, I was looking it up on uh, online just out of curiosity, and I thought it was about I'm sticking it through and being tough and all that stuff. Well, actually, when I looked it up, it was it it, it was a song written for. Uh, actually, the song was uh, written for someone else. It was actually to a gal. Everybody thought it was you know a sense of survival in the face of adversity, which believe me is perfectly fine according to the person. But in fact, it's probably 
infinitely more interesting perhaps that it was initially written about, which is, a memory serves me correctly, it was a sort of a kiss off to an old girlfriend. You know the sort of thing, don't you worry about me, I'll perfectly fine. So it actually had nothing to do about. But for me, as you know, two months ago on Father's Day of all days, I had a heart attack, and long story short, I lived through it, and here I am, and I thought, uh, I'm still standing. So I don't know what the words say or mean, I'm just going to rely on the title. So I'm still standing here. All right. So anyway, but this was a tricky song to try to find some setups for, because when you listen to the, the song, the drum pattern and the bass line or whatever, I had a hard time finding a rhythm style. Now, I may guess that if some of you have a rhythm style called 8 beat rock, you could probably use that. 8 beat rock. 8 beat rock. Uh, if you find the right tempo, you have to kind of fool around with the auto basses. I, I'm going to experiment with that a little bit. But I'm going to tell you the style that I use today. Does anybody know, want to guess what style I used without looking? Or is it off now? Anybody have a clue what style I used? <laughs> no, I tried that actually. I tried, um, I tried a few and I came close. Eight beats then? Nope, that's not the one I used, but I was, don't look, don't look. I'm going to put it on, but here we go. Any, any guesses out there? Nope. Nope. All right. I was just curious if there was any guesses. So I'm going to put it on, and I'm going to put on the rhythm preset and the original. Like if you put this rhythm on with no fancy pre, you just use what the organ gives you, and I'll do the introduction, and you tell me what it sounds like. Are you ready? Hit the road, Jack. That's, that's hit the road is the style. And I, I got the drum beat and I thought, that drum beat. I thought, okay, I could use that drum beat. But if you listen to the song, <clears throat> I'm still standing, there's that <clears throat> bass line that's constantly boom, boom, boom. And I was just moving around and, and so. And what I came up with was this, it's the same rhythm. I found a way to do that. So <clears throat> it just goes to show you that I you say this all the time. When you're using your rhythm styles, fool around with those auto basses, the altar styles, and the drum variations, because you'll you'll under you'll you'll find things in there that you normally wouldn't find. And that's how I got it. <clears throat> so I use the hit the road style and and I also listen to the song. Now this is weird because the song in easy play. I might, I'm going to need Don to do the, the brain work here. In easy play, the one that I have is in the key of G. Okay? But when I played it without transposing it, he didn't sing it in the key of G. I don't know. I transposed it up three half steps up. It says E flat on the organ, but it's not really E flat. So if I transpose it up three half steps from G, what key does that make it? B e flat. Huh? G one. B e flat. B flat is B as in boy. <clears throat> so when I matched up the notes, I wanted to at least make the the notes for my ears because I was I was I had the song playing on the you know my phone, <clears throat> and I wanted to match it up. So when I was practicing it, the more I played along along with it. So, you know, you could take your phone on some of the organs, you could take your phone, which I'm going to do early, later on, and have a song, and then maybe practice the melody with it while it's playing. It's a great way to learn the song. That's how I learned to play it. Okay? <clears throat> but I had to match the key, so I was doing all of this and that. And what I discovered is the song is actually in B flat, I guess, the way it sounds on the recording. 
So to do that, I had to transpose the organ three half steps up. Okay, now, the song is in the key of G and easy play. If you transpose the three half steps up on the organ, in the window, it'll say E flat, but that's not the key that you're actually in. It'll actually sound like it's in the key of B flat. But for the purpose of this, write this down. Transpose the organ up three half steps. Uh-oh, my phone's ringing. And that means... You're frozen. My frozen, yes, my phone is my camera. Let me put it on airplane mode. Okay. <clears throat> I'm my back. Okay. Oh, shoot. Now I changed the zoom. Excuse me. There we go. Is it back? Nope. Oh, boy. <laughs> Let me pause. Nice time. You like the time? What was I saying? <clears throat> transpose. Oh, transpose. So, Long story short, if you want to make note to yourself on your music, just put transpose up three half steps. The window will say it's in E flat, but if someone ever asks, you're not in E flat. Just remember that, okay? The second thing I did <clears throat> was find the rhythm choice. The rhythm choice that I used was hit the road, and I think there's a few others that you can experiment with. I actually, uh, <clears throat> let me see. I think 8-beat rock was one of them. Um, I actually used a, a gospel rhythm because of really fast hand clapping rhythm styles or the, uh, let's see, I think it's called uh, Revival. Those, those rhythm styles actually have a drum beat that's very similar to that. It's not exact with the bass line. But here's what I did. As I turned on, hit the road, all right? I have genie or basic off. So if you have an A series model, an SU, turn off genie. <clears throat> if you have the E or the EX, turn off basic, okay? And I left just the orchestra plus off, on, sorry. So it goes from this, okay? So that's the style that would be for hit the road. But I'm a, but no, listen to that piano in the background. I didn't that, that didn't work with it because that's more of like a bluesy kind of thing. Dun, dun, dun. So I turn off the genie and it turns it off. But the auto bass, most of the time when you put on a rhythm, auto bass is on auto bass one. That bass line doesn't fit. Not that beginning. So if I put on auto bass two, watch what happens. And voila, we have. All right. And it's, and it, and it's almost like a, it's a great, it's a great, uh, <clears throat> it's almost identical to the, the original. All right, my guitar strap has arrived. And the stand, I'll put that here. It's a guitar strap my parents got me for Christmas. It says Rock and Rob on it. Oh, yeah. Okay. Rock and Rob. Okay. So, um, I give me the, uh, he's got my house key. He'll get it to me later. Don't forget to give it to me. Uh, uh, okay. Now, what I did when I hit, used hit the road, I actually have uh, on the bottom right keyboard in the introduction I have a guitar sound down here and let me just tell you what sound is there I have uh, in the orchestra one guitar electric blues write that down <clears throat> guitar electric solo those are both in the orchestral and that gives me this sound Okay. And guitar electric blues and guitar electric solo. And then what I did is I put on dynamic king or the touch. So when I'm playing, 
I don't have to hit it too hard. Okay, now I'll, I'm going to write this down. For, write this down. I'll tell you what notes. In the beginning of the introduction of that song, it starts off actually at a G minor chord. Okay, so the three chords that you want to play is G minor, C minor, and D minor. Now I'm going to get this typed up, these chords and these notes, and I'll put them on the Patreon, but I need a few days to write it out. I play that in the very beginning. That's my introduction. I don't use the built-in introduction for this, because if you do, you get... That doesn't sound like anything. It's a cool introduction, but... It, you do on intro two. It's cool, but if you listen to the introduction of the song "I'm Still Standing," it actually sounds like this. So all I'm doing is playing a G minor, C minor, and a D minor, and on the right hand with the guitar sound. I don't know if you could see it from there. You could probably see it better. Let me do a little zoom. Whoa. Need to hire a cameraman. That's me. <laughs> okay. So on the right hand, on the bottom keyboard, <clears throat> I start off with a G minor, which is G, B flat, and D. If you want to write that down, G, B flat, and D. In that position. And then the second one is C minor, but the position is G, C, and E flat. Yeah, I'm going to tell you the notes. Write this down. The chords are G minor, C minor, and D minor, okay? And the notes that I'm playing, the position I'm playing in is G minor is G, G B flat, D. C minor is G, C, E flat. And then D minor is F, A, D. Okay? So I'll say it one more time, G minor, G, B flat, D, those are the notes I play in that position. C minor is G, C, E flat, and then D minor is F, A, D. Now you can, you can say, well, I could play it in these notes, but that's the way it sounds in the introduction of the song from the recording. And the only thing that I do is this, listen. And then it repeats. And those two notes there is E flat and F. And you play it in the bottom too? I play it in the bottom because I have a guitar sound down here. So watch this. Here we go. Okay. That's my first setup. That's just used for the introduction. So if you have the music, <clears throat> let me pull it up on the screen. And what's great about this song, <laughs> I only have a few setups, and the song is very repetitive. Okay? So um, let me just pull up the music here. So if you want to know my setup, I did the first setup in the very beginning. So in the very beginning, in the top, you could put uh, a one in the very beginning. That's the first, right before I even play the song. Before you do the right. Yeah. Right. Oh, I didn't put any other numbers on here. <laughs> That's the first setup. And then the second setup, I actually start the song with this sound. Just a good, I figured it's Elton John, so I might as well feature a piano, right? So, and then I go into the, the melody. So I put on the same rhythm. The sa oh, the tempo, by the way, is 177. I probably should have told you that. 
177 is the tempo. All right. Yeah, it is kind of an upbeat song. Okay. But on the upper keyboard, I have a piano, just a classic piano that comes up on the organ. And just for a little flavor, I put on the 16 and 8 foot flutes. So you won't hear it really strong, but here's the piano. But there's a touch of an organ sound with it. Now what? Okay, so I have a 16 and 8 foot flute and 16 foot strings. But what you hear the most is the piano, watch. <laughs> Try it again. That's really what I use for that whole first part of the page. And then if you look at the music, it repeats. And guess what? I keep it simple and use the same sound. Okay? Now, if you go to the second page, you'll see right before the second page, you have a part that goes like this. All right? So there's a little shift in the song and the arrangement. And so I go from this whoops, and then I go to my next preset. I did a couple subtle changes there and all I did is I still have the piano naturally and all I did is I added a five and a third and a four foot flute so now that it goes from this organ sound and some strings to this but when you're playing the melody it you're not going to hear that organ and string sound too strongly Okay, you're going to hear it, but you're going to still hear the piano. So all I did is I added a five and a third, four foot flute and an eight foot string. And that was it. Same rhythm, same everything. And then on my lower tabs, I have a eight foot strings. And on the lower, I have a guitar blues. So you kind of hear it in the background there. So it goes from like this to this. So let's see. So I play that, obviously, that section, I play it until I get to the third page. Head's cut off now. <laughs> the headless instructor. I get to the third page, and I do make some changes here. Now, once you have this third thing, this third setup, you can go, and go back and forth between the three, OK? Now the third setup, if you, if, you, if you know the song I'm Still Standing, he actually goes, I'm Still Standing, and in the background the chorus goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. I couldn't find a yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> I tried. <clears throat> so I came up with the closest thing that I could find that could at least pass, okay? So look, before I talk about the hey, 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 or the la, 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 or the vocals, let me tell you what I did to the background and the, and the right hand. So on the right hand, all I did was I, I kept the piano. I have the 16, 8, 5, and a third and 4 foot flute, so that's the same. I have the 16, 8 foot strings, that's the same. But I added a harmony, okay? 
and the duet, just to kind of give it a nice little fullness. Not too much. Duet's like two parts, so it goes. Okay? But what I did on the lower right keyboard, because if I try to do it in two different setups, you have to go back and forth. So what I did was I programmed the top with this sound, and I put the vocals on the bottom. Because the only time I'm going to use that is that one part of the song. So here's, now pay very, you want to write this down. So here's what I used. Are you ready? I used in the orchestral one and two. I used vocal, hey. I couldn't find vocal, yeah. Vocal, what? It's called vocal, hey. Now, the reason why I say that, -E like, hey, yeah, -E yeah, H-E-Y. Okay. It's vocal because a lot of the sounds on the Lowry organs are broken, like all the guitar sounds, acoustic guitar, you wouldn't scroll to the A's. You go to the G's for the guitar sounds, and then you find all of the guitars within the G. Vocal sounds, a lot of the vocal sounds are in the V. So you go up to V for the vocals, and there's a bunch of different vocals in there. So what I programmed in the orchestral one and the two is vocal hey. And then the second one I put vocal do ba dao. Right, do ba, sorry. <laughs> vocal do, and then in parentheses it's ba. Now you won't really hear it like that, but do ba. Right, it's vocal colon, do, D-O-O, -O, and then in parentheses it says B-A-H. All right? And then in the solo, I put another vocal, do, ba, and there's a reason for that. You know, I'll tell you why in a minute. And in the solo two, I put vocal, la. So I've four different vocals. Now here's why I did that. <clears throat> I ended up doing a harmony because if you listen to the song, it's not just one guy going, hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. You just, it's like several people singing that part. So what I did is I put the vocal sounds. I have two from the orchestral and two from the solo. Okay? And when I put on a harmony, the solo will not make a harmony, but it'll stand out. And the other two will actually do a harmony. And the harmony that I used was block harmony. Okay? So what, so what happens is you get this. And that's really that, what I have that part for. But at the very end of the song, the way the song is recorded, he kind of fades out <clears throat> with that part, okay? Do you have all this in the... In the uh, I'm going to talk about that later, yes and no. <laughs> you want to take right notes. Now, I will have really detailed notes for everybody because, uh, of course, I had everything ready to go, and this morning I made a few changes. <laughs> so it's a, it, yeah, I always do. I go, I like this better. Originally, I had the octaves of the vocals a little low, and I didn't like it, so I put it back up to normal and all that stuff. <clears throat> all right, so the, I really have four setups I'm working with here. Okay, the first one, the first setup it has, I have a sound on the top keyboard, but I'm not even, that's where I use for the introduction, but I have the guitar sound on the bottom keyboard, those guitars that I told you about. The second setup has the piano and a little bit of touch of the 16 and 8 foot flute, okay? The third setup is almost the same, but I just add a 5 and a third and 4 foot flute and I have 16 and 8 foot strings. And then the fourth setup I have that sound on the upper keyboard, but then on the lower right, I have those vocal sounds that I mentioned. So essentially, if you're looking at your music, you could say 
page one, the first setup is not even in page one. It's like before you even play the first page. Okay? Because that's what I use for the introduction. My own introduction, those chords that I told you. But really, <clears throat> the second setup that I told you is page one. The third setup is page two. And if you go to page three, on the one, two, three, third measure of page three, that's the fourth setup. Okay? Now, you can take those four setups and you can use them in any, like if it tells you to repeat, you can use you can go back and use one of those setups. What I decided to do, I was, I was going to do a guitar solo on the organ like the thing, but I thought that's going to be a little bit too much to try to teach that to everybody and them get it. So I decided when I, because it tells me to re go back to the beginning, the song, music says go back to the beginning and play. All I did was use my guitar sound, or you can use the piano, you can do whatever you want. Okay, here's the thing. When you get to the end of the song, just make sure you're on the setup that has your vocal sound. So if you're doing this, okay, and then use the fade out of the organ, and you just keep playing that over and over as it says in the music. Okay? <clears throat> Now, there are a couple chords I didn't like on this, the way they had it structured. And I, I made some notations this morning because I was playing it. I'm going, something doesn't sound right in this measure. Okay? So let me see if I can do this in real time. And I'll point it out to you. <clears throat> so let me put up the music on the screen and then I'll, I'll point to you guys where to do this. Okay? So stay with me here. On the third page, let's see here. Let's see if I could do this in real time, folks. One, two, three. Where'd it go? I know I copied it. Copy. Page three. Why is it not pasting? Okay. Let me just do it here then. Okay. Let me increase this. Okay, is that big enough? All right. So right here, and this on the third page, go to the third line. You see up at the top, there's no chord on the top on the first measure, right? You see the D or D seventh on the second measure? Yes? yes? Okay. Now the very next measure has no chord and then the fourth measure has a, a, D, a G minor. I say do the G minor on that F and the E flat before you play those notes. Put it right there. It just sounded better to me. No, on the top of the third page. So everybody go to the top of the third page. Go to the third measure. There's no chord there. And you'll see two notes there. Yeah, put a G minor on, ab above those. Uh, above them or yep. on the line? Above it. Start. You play a G minor. You see right here? You can leave that G minor. It's okay. But you just leave that, do that G minor right there. Now, if you play it the other way and you like it, that's fine, but I, I liked it better by having that, okay? And then go down to the next line and the same thing. Right down, right before the coda. See that F and E flat? I put it right there. That's My ear said it sounds better there, all right? Now go to the next line. What's the next chord on the next line? It's a D or D7, right? I didn't like that. In fact, 
because I think it, that's wrong. I put a C minor there. Yeah, I'm going to put an X here on the screen. Yes. Yes, but there's one more chord you have to do. And that is on the next measure, right above the A, D or D7. I moved it, yeah. All right. So I'm going to leave that up so you all, if you have your music out there in Zoom land, I don't think you can see it from here from that angle, but <clears throat> on the top of the five pages. I could have gotten away with three on this, but I did it nonetheless. <laughs> so on the third page at the very top, third measure. Oh, I have it downloaded my iPad. I guess I could have just done that, but I did all the work taping, so I'll just... Uh, <laughs> okay, so again, I'm going to leave it up on the screen for you folks there. Third page, one, two, third measure, put a G minor over the F and the E flat. Next line, you have C minor, D seventh, and then if you go to the F and the E flat again, there's no chord there, put a G minor there. You can leave the G minor that follows, it doesn't matter, it just carries over. And then on the third line... It says D or D seventh. I replaced it with a C minor and then a D, okay? Because this is what it happens. It sounds like this. Here we go. G minor. C minor. See? See how that sounded? C minor, C minor, D. The notes fit better with the chord that I'm giving you. If you don't, it'll sound like this. D. It almost sounds off for a moment. I don't know why they did that. <clears throat> okay? Is that the original song, the way it's written? It's pretty close, actually. Uh, with those it's pretty close, but the, no, I think the chords in the song is what I just told you. Okay. All right, now if you go to the fourth page, I have a couple more of those corrections, places where I don't think it works. If you go to the fourth page, go three lines down. You see where it says the F? See where that F minor is? I don't like that F minor. <laughs> it's, it's, it's the same, yeah, because the melody, the melody is the same. So, put a G minor there, yeah. Okay? And then if you go to the last page, very last page, go to the very last line. No, let's see. See where that D7 is? Uh -huh. I put a C minor there. C minor, cross off the D. Okay. Oh, shoot. Lost my TV screen. Oh. <laughs> Don't move anything. <laughs> and, then, and then bring the D or D7 on the next, yeah, where the A is. <clears throat> so let me back up for you guys. I went really fast. On the fourth page, one, two, three, three lines down, I put a G minor over the, what chord was that? I don't even know anymore. F, you see F on the minor. Fourth? F minor, yeah, I didn't like that. Okay? And then on the last page, last line, where your D is, or the D7, I put a C minor there instead, and then the D7, okay? Robert? Yes. Don't you have to put a G minor in the second measure on that last page, and also on the third measure, second line? What's the last page? Last page. Uh, actually, yeah, you could do that. Yes. Yeah, on the last page, you can, uh, I think what happened is I was playing the song, and I just was using the other pages because they were repeating, so I didn't play the last page, but you could put a G minor here. And also the line above the second measure. Oh, yes, you can do it there too, yes, I would do that. 
So on the fourth page, I stand corrected. Fourth page on the very top. See where it says I'm still F and E flat? Put a G minor there. Fifth page, sorry, last page, last page, last page. I'll just refer to it as the last page. Okay? So here's the last page. <coughs> okay? So right above where it says F and E flat, I'm still, I would put a G minor there. And on the next line towards the end where the F and E flat is, G minor. And then on the very last nine, C minor and the D seventh. Okay? That last two pages, I'm using my four setups with the vocals on it, just so you know. So you can interchange the presets. When I post the when I post the the you know this up there, I'm gonna suggest where I put the presets. But now that I had a little rehearsing time, I'll play it again one time through, okay? So <clears throat> uh, just a few things for you Zoomlanders out there. So I have, you know, I've been teaching Song of the Month for almost two years now. And what you don't know is over the last two years, well, some of you know, I've been kind of posting some of my setups and what have you. And, you know, I th what I've been doing over the last two years uh, because I have multiple multiple things that I do, I don't just get to work on the song all the time. But what I did is over the last two years, I've taken all my song song of the months, and and then some. And what I did is I some I didn't tweak, and some I did, and I've come up with some different arrangements. And um, and I've actually had some people say, you know, I heard Marco sells his things online. I don't know why don't you sell them? I said, we don't sell those. I sell organs. <laughs> But um, anyway, so what I decided to do, and I just told the owner, I said, you know, I want to do this because I put a lot of heart and effort. So what I'm going to do is if anybody, if you appreciated some of the song of the months I've done, um, <clears throat> and just as an example, this is a song of the month book. I don't know if you could see that there, but, you know, I have every song and then some in here. There's 22 that I've done. Bass and Mucho, What a Wonderful World, Three Eyes of Love, some, some I played today, somewhere out there, Phantom of the Opera, et cetera, et cetera. And um, some big man music, cabaret, just a lot of songs that I love. And I try to find songs that also had some themes to it. You know, I did some tributes, obviously, to my, my daughter, and I did some, and today was I'm Still Standing, you know. And so I have all the songs, and these are the instruction guides, but the songs and the, and the instructions, how to manually set it up, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I actually redid the soliloquy notes. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to offer my arrangements uh, for sale, and I'm going to ask you to consider if you have a USB organ, because what I did is, uh, and it's going to be up at the website. It might even be up there now. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm offering my uh, song of the months and this is not just um, this is not just a uh, let's see which one is it uh, my screen sharing the right thing here <laughs> computers <laughs> minimize how about this one here so what I'm gonna do for a short time is if anybody because a lot of people have had trouble downloading them, getting them, getting them to work. What I'm going to do is offer, uh, make a special offer, my song of the month. The trick was, what was the true value? And to me, I thought, all the work I put into it's worth thousands. But I can't get away from doing that. So I'm, I'm going to be offering a song of the month series arrangements and performance. And... Again, these are all the songs that you saw on the list, and actually there's going to have some bonus tracks on there, some that I have not done. For example, Ava Maria, I haven't done that in a class. So I'm going to offer that. I have some other songs that I've done prior to my Song of the Month that are going to be on there, and they're going to be uh, obviously 22 custom arrangements. Some of them are going to be bonus arrangements. Some of them I called remastered, meaning I went back and I tweaked them to work for... Um, <coughs> you know, for the prestige where it didn't work before. 
Um, in some cases, uh, I actually made bonus ones for marquee if you had those organs. Over 200 presets, there's going to be some bonus intros and endings. Uh, obviously, there's going to be access to the class recording. And every one of the songs that I'm teaching are going to be recorded so you can hear the recording that using the presets. You know what they sound like, some extraction material. But here's the cool thing. I'm going to also, free of charge, the USB will have the easy play, but free of charge, I'm including the songbook, a printed songbook at no charge as part of that. So really you're getting the arrangements, all the other stuff is bonus. And so typical, I talk to a lot of musicians in the industry at Denisovs and the Marcos, they usually charge $10 an arrangement uh, plus material. So um, this is going to be offered for only $249 versus the $279. And if you order it by September 4th, um, we're going to do some pre-orders. You're going to save an extra 20% off of that. So, and then all the orders will be shipped out on the 7th. So that gives us time to get all the orders uh, ready to go, printed materials, what have you. You'll get the USB. You'll have the arrangements. So all the songs that you saw listed, if you want to play any of those songs, you use those setups and you'll sound actually as good as me or better because I made some oops today. <laughs> Um, and so, and the, these are the models that they're compatible with. So obviously Aria, Aria 22, Grand Marquis, Grand Marquis Extreme, Marquis, Rialto, Inspire, Liberty, Symphony, Patriot, Sterling, Imperial, and Prestige. And this will be up on our website. It's probably there now. And it'll have this little thing. You can actually scan that code uh, and it'll bring you right to the option to pay. And the discounts automatically calculated in there to be safe 20 percent so it's like fifty dollars off so you put in your order you'll get all of the you'll get a usb with all that stuff a printed book with all the materials in it all the instruction guides um, and really the reason why i give myself a week is because i got to finish up today's song <laughs> and add that to the mix and and so that will be on our website for seven days and it'll stay on seven days after however uh, I'm just checking to see if they posted it yet. However, oh yeah, so on the website, you go to the website, it's already on there. And then if you, you can click on here to look at the flyer or you can just click here and purchase and you'll see that the 20% is automatically calculated. So when you click there, it automatically calculates and it saves you the $50 right off the bat. So uh, it's a great way to have all of my arrangements. Uh, I've worked very hard over the last two years putting it together. But more importantly, I went back and redid a lot of those where I thought, you know, this could have been better here, been better there, or I like this style. And in some cases, like today, I, I like my slow one and my fast ones. I was like, I'll just do both. <laughs> so I've got, uh, there's a lot of custom arrangements on there. So. Uh, it supports the Fletcher Music Club, but more importantly, it gets you some really great arrangements that I work really hard near and okay. dear in my heart. So here we go. Any questions before I play? <laughs> you want me to repeat the whole thing? You got to go on uh, Patreon and watch it. You can pause it. What did he say? Rewind it, pause it, resume it. <clears throat> so even if you don't, you know, I don't have any notes, you can always stop. What did he say? Oh, okay, that's what he said. All right. Here we go. Let's see if I can do a better job at this. Okay. Boy, it's like you got to start over here and I got to go like this. <laughs>
There we go. <laughs> and, and actually, if you catch on that third page, you, there's actually built into the second line the C minor D seventh. And that's where I got the idea, because I just couldn't figure out why they didn't write it again on the music, because it's the exact same thing on both of those lines. So they did it right the first time, but I had to add it. So um, <clears throat> now when I, when I originally put my presets together, originally I had it where these were the sounds. And listen. I had just really good jazz organ sounds and different combinations. And here's... Here's a little trick for you. Someone said earlier it's a little fast. This is a pretty fast tempo. And it is. And when, I, and when I'm learning a new song that's a fast tempo, you know, for the first time, you kind of work your way around it. You fumble a little bit. Little, little trick for you. If you're ever learning a new song and you find yourself going, this is taking me a little time, use an organ sound and or strings when you're practicing. And do you know why? Well, listen. Huh? They're faster. No. When, when, it, any song, really. If you're, having a, if you're fumbling around a song you're getting used to. Cause sometimes, sometimes you can get a song and it could be a slow song, but it might be tricky in the finger and you've gotten comfortable. When you play it enough times, you get comfortable playing the song. But if I'm playing the song like this, and I'm like when I first learned it, I wasn't using piano at all because there was a lot on happening. There's a lot happening with the notes, right? But imagine you're using a piano sound, for example, and you're not playing it comfortably yet. You're not comfortable, and you make a lot of mistakes. Okay? Even if the rhythm is on, it's covered. But if you have an organ sound on, when you have an organ or string sound, it doesn't sound as bad. <laughs> I don't know. I, I think the pianos seem a little bit more noticeable when you're hearing. You're really hearing them, or you're using like guitar sounds, vibraphones. When you make mistakes with the vibe sound, it really stands out because a lot of the vibraphones on the Lowry organs have a built-in sustain. So if you make a mistake or two and you hit a wrong note or something, it really stands out. So a lot of times I put on a simple basic organ and strings just for practicing, and sometimes I actually like the sound, but when I want to get through the song, just to kind of get comfortable with the song, I'll start off with that, okay? So, anyway, I'm still standing, <laughs> even after a couple oops in there. <clears throat> okay, so, folks, I promised the concert, so what I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do is pause the recording. I'm going to go use the boys' room, and I'm going to take a few minutes just to make sure everything's set up here. I gotta get my songs out of my iPad somewhere. And I'll give you like guys a little mini concert. How's that sound? Does that sound good? Oh come on, give me a big round of applause. Yes, yes, yes. All right, yes, yes, thank you. What time you think uh, you're gonna be over? Uh, let's see.